Blog Talk Radio. Hey, thank you guys for listening, everyone, folks, everyone listening to the Ultra Perform Show, the show about performing your best. Today we have the Twinkie Artist. Say hi, Twinkie Artist. Hi. Thanks for having me. <laughs> thanks for being on. And how do I pronounce your name? It's Alyssa. Is that right? Alicia. 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 Okay. Yeah. I always I yeah. always uh, twist the name up a little bit. I pronounce it. I use my creative license, I think, and I I change names. Like John could be Johan sometimes. Just depends. Yeah. Well, I actually so my um, last name, which I'm not going to say since I keep my identity hidden, but my last name is like butchered pretty much my entire life, and the only time. I was able to get it pronounced correctly was when I graduated from college. They allowed us to um, spell our names phonetically on a, like a card, which was nice since we spent all that money for the degree, they did get the name right. (laughs) So. Well, that's good. Sorry about that. Some technical difficulties there, but you're live from New York city, right? Where in New York are you? I am. I'm, I'm in Manhattan. I live downtown. Nice. Yeah, I lived in New York for nine years. I say it's eight years too long. <laughs> you know, eight years definitely too long. takes That's a lot funny. out of you. Yeah. So. Does it? Why? Why is that? Why is that the case? Well, I mean, it's expensive. You know, it's like you deal with all types of people. Um, I do like the brutal, like, honesty of people in New York. I think that's really nice. Like, everyone here is very direct, and I am direct, and yeah. so I appreciate that quality in people. Um, well, I, well, I I was born in Queens, and uh, I've had to learn. And I we were, I was born in Queens. We lived in Queens for a while, and then we moved to Jersey City. Then we came here, and I've had to learn to tone it down because Utah people cannot handle the New York attitude. Really? Well, most, you know, you have no Utah, accent, yeah. though, for somebody born in Queens. Well, I have to other people than a native New Yorker. New Yorkin? New Yorkin, they'll yeah. hear a little bit of an accent. Um, and yeah. it comes out here and there. You know, it just depends. Usually when I'm pissed off, it comes out. And somewhat, I yeah. can see that. Because in New York, pe- People don't understand if New York, in New York, if you let people push you around, they'll just eat you up. And so here, when someone gets after me, that's when they see my New York side, usually. Yeah, see, for me, I've run into problems, like, in work situations, because I've worked for a lot of, like, West Coast-based companies, and I've always been just, like, brutally honest about issues or problems that have occurred, and I feel like they take that as, like, me being pessimistic or um, – you know, and it's just like, no, I tell it like it is. I'm not going to pretend something's like working when it's not, you know. And um, I feel like I feel like uh, people in California don't really like that. Are you still there? Yeah, I'm here. It cut out for okay, a second. Sorry. Sorry, okay. that happens sometimes during a live show. When you can re- when you record it, it doesn't happen so much because you can just redo it. But um, I was asking you, I've met so many women that visit New York, love New York. They want to go back to New York. Why is that? Why do women specifically love New York so much? Um, I guess, well, for me, um, I guess it's just because there's so much to look at and so much to do. Um, I've always been more of like an urban person, like living in cities is just the thing that I like. I'm not really, um, I grew up in a suburb, you know, as a kid and I found it really boring. And for me, it's just, there's just so much energy. There's so many different types of people. Um, I also do like to window shop occasionally. So, you know, there's, there's a lot of aspirational consumerism I can get into living in New York, you know, um, nice. love George Goodman yeah. and just uh, fantasize about maybe something I will never afford. Um, and, and just, and you know, I mean, there's so much culture, know. museums. <laughs> Sorry, what? Culture, museums. What is that story you mentioned? Can you tell us what kind of oh, story for Dorf Goodman. For people that don't um, know. Yeah. It's, uh, I think they're owned by Neiman Marcus now, but it's one of the oldest department stores in New York. Um, it's just like very, it's a very nice space. It's, 
kind of a little bit old school, but they do have cutting edge designers in there. It's just fun to walk into um, because the way it's curated and laid out is pretty nice. And um, yeah, it's, it's definitely a New York store, which I appreciate. Nice. Also the food, yeah, nice. I find like New York pizza is really good. I love the bagels. The bagels here are way better than anywhere else. Yeah, we can see we can see you love the pizza. Don't you have like a, one of those pictures I used uh, with you loving the pizza or somebody? Yeah. So yeah, it, no, those are every picture of mine is me. Oh, good. Cool. So tell us a little bit about uh, what you want to talk about. You want to talk a bit about social media and on social social media and the censorship. You feel like it's moving backwards. Why do you feel that way? I do. Um, so I was recently, I recently had my Instagram profile disabled, um, which I didn't have like an astronomical following. I had like 7,200 followers, which for me, I was like, wow, that's really good because I've always had difficulty like growing social media it's just like not really an intuitive process for me um sure and for me yeah it does take a lot of time a lot of interaction um and for me it was really just a platform and a creative outlet I have a very uncreative job you know I don't do anything in the arts for my job but I have an art background Mm -hmm. and so I really needed it as a creative outlet and so my profile got disabled even though I never posted any nudity or anything like that, and I was kind of just trying to go over in my head because it got disabled for suggestive content, even though I literally was eating food, maybe in a slightly (laughs) suggestive way, but I'm sure if you spend time on the platform, you've seen way, way suggestive stuff that is not removed at all. Well, and we we talked about that, and I I don't understand that. Like, a lot of the TikToks or Reels, are way sexually explicit, even the songs. I mean, the yeah. the number one song in the nation for a while, and we we talked about this before, was, uh, I can't remember her name or the song now. But you know what I'm talking oh, about, um, right? Oh, Walk? Yeah, Walk. Yeah, right? Walk. Come on. Like, oh, that's okay, yeah. but you eating food isn't. Now, why? Why do you think that is? Well, so I actually think, so this by Cardi B, so I actually think that there were a couple of Cardi things B, yeah. which also it, speaks, it speaks volumes to the problem of, like, using AI to basically, like, moderate, but then there's kind of multiple problems because they have a billion users, so if you don't use AI, then how can you moderate? Because it's, like, really difficult when you have that many users, so I understand that pain point. But I noticed that, like, so... In February, I think it was, um, of 2020 or 20, I I don't remember if it was then or like this past year, I had made a comment on somebody's food photo of, they had a food photo of star-shaped cucumber. And I made an emoji comment of like the, the the, you know, face with the tongue out to the side, like a star and the cucumber emoji. And I thought like, oh, I'm just being creative with emojis. And then suddenly a thing popped up saying, your comment went against our community guidelines for sexual explicit (laughs) content. Last time I checked, like I always thought it was the eggplant and peach. I had no idea that that type of comment would get flagged. And so I didn't realize that I could appeal that. So I didn't. And so I got a violation on my account for something very benign. Um, And then, you know, a week later, I don't know what I was thinking. I should have probably just stuck to, like, a smiley face emoji for the rest of the time uh, on Instagram. I decided to comment on somebody's food photo again, and it was, like, cotton candy. And I used, you know, that same face and a cloud and something else. And, again, removed the comment in violation of their community guidelines for sexual content. And I was like, you have to be kidding me. Um, so is, and, it, is there anything you can do about it once it's gone to that point? Well, you can appeal it. And I didn't know at the time that you could appeal those. And if you do successfully appeal them, they don't remain on your account. Um, but I do know that if you get a certain number in a certain period of time, they will remove your account or disable it, um, which once it's disabled, it's very difficult to get back. Um, but mm. So I guess my whole point is, is we're at the point of censorship that we feel those emojis are threatening. 
And I also think the problem becomes, um, especially with like anything that's artistic, creative, is you have an AI moderating things that doesn't even understand context. Mm, I see. Um, yeah, that makes sense. But you know, but you also have on the other side people doing reels and TikToks showing off their camel toe on purpose, yeah. right? So that's why to me it's so confusing, right? I mean, it's like I see it. I'm a man or a woman or what, whatever. I'm attracted to it when I see it. At the same time, though, I, and I'm not a prude or anything, and there's nothing wrong with that, but at the same time, I'm also like, ew, you know, how old is this person, right? You can't really tell, yeah. you know? Yeah. And why is this on here, right? It's basically porn. It is, you know? yeah. Well, yeah. and I guess the part that's, like, very frustrating is um, when they do – moderate um it's like it's very like spotty it's like they pick and choose doesn't really make sense uh somebody sent me a video of this man in a cornfield like graphically giving oral sex to a corn of cob and like to me it's like why why is that staying up why was my stuff taken down and that was staying up why is this other artist content removed when they did a very like classy beautiful photo yes nudity but they covered up the nipples which is in the guidelines but their whole profile was disabled also why is that happening to them to me to all these other people yet that guy goes out into a cornfield and that's allowed i have a problem with that yeah yeah i'm sure at some point someone somewhere is suing them for something right yeah but unfortunately with tech companies they're highly protected um I believe by section 230. And so they're not really liable for anything, um, mm. which in their terms, when you sign up, it says that they're not liable for any type of loss that you incur on their platform, including the loss of your content. Well, um, sure. So I, I took, I took like a year of law school and I've been in business for years, right? This isn't my main thing. And I love doing the show. But one thing I learned is that when you sign any document like that, like with a bank, Uh, I like to make a joke. They said sign here. And basically you're signing that they can do whatever they want with your money. So everything's kind of like that. It it would tag with social media. When you accept it, like Facebook, right? If you're on Facebook, you're accepting that they can be listening to this conversation right now, see all your texts, use your phone, use your pictures on your phone at any time they want so they can advertise, right? So if we say I want to rent a car, right now we'll get ads for renting a car right yeah um but you basically sign everything away once you agree to use the product yeah of course mm-hmm. well and, and I that's also why think Apple... that if... sorry go ahead go ahead no no go ahead well so i think also that's why it's just not a priority either because it's clear that their priority is being the, the largest and growing as much revenue as possible. And so I don't think they intentionally do a bad job moderating people. I just think that it is a byproduct of how they choose to go about their business, basically like winning at all costs and being the largest at all costs, no matter what that means for their users, like who gets disabled, who no longer enjoys using the platform, how many people they action block for trying to grow without paying for ads, et cetera. Um, And I feel like that's a, pretty big like conversation because I feel like a lot of people not just artists are affected by that um, but go ahead what you were going to say yeah yeah well I well I've seen that I don't remember what I was going to say but I, I I've seen that in, in the sense that um, I I used to get a lot more views on my videos and it's gone down drastically because they want you to pay and yeah. I started doing videos on Facebook when you could do videos on Facebook and then as soon as it went live, I went live. I've done over like a thousand motivational videos. But wow. um yeah, it's drastically uh changed the 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 landscape to make you pay. And it's always kinda like that. When Pandora first came out, you know Pandora, right? I do, yeah. Well, they killed the radio market. They killed it, right? Radio was dead. Uh, all the stations, everything was just dying, just bleeding. And Pandora advertised, advertised no ads, no ads for about, I don't know how long, four or five years. And then 
that was always the plan, right? Because they're they were a startup. They switched to having yeah. ads because that's how you had to make revenue. And so that's kind of like that's kind of the pattern is that with tech companies is that or social media platforms, different platforms in that sense, everything's free until they get to a certain point, so a certain followership or a certain plan, then they start uh, uh, generating revenue through advertising. It's always about advertising. Which makes sense. And I think that it's possible to – I think it's possible for a company, which obviously <laughs> – I mean, I don't own a company, and I don't own a company the size of, you know, Instagram or Facebook, so um, I don't know how my opinion counts, but um, I think it's possible to have, like, do it in a more ethical way. Um, because also, you know, there's been all, like, these data leaks with uh, Facebook, and, you know, there's companies that sell that data, and they actually make most of their revenue through advertising, Um but I also think that it needs to be a balance of also making sure that you appreciate your users because at the end of the day, it's actually the users that make the platform um, because without the users, there wouldn't be a platform to begin with. Um, it's just like if a celebrity is mean towards their fans, well, you're kind of a celebrity because you have those fans. Like that's kind of what defines your status, you know? And so um, I think it's really important too to make sure that, you still appreciate the people that are making it that you can advertise to them and that, you know, these bigger companies are wanting to advertise on the platform because they know they're going to reach this many people. Um, Absolutely. But I do think maybe like I am slightly naive thinking that um, there should be justice the way that everything is moderated because I know that's difficult. I think that, you know, racism, hate speech that has no place anywhere on any platform. I would love to see all of that removed. Um, again, it's like difficult to do, but instead we're like getting upset over emojis and not really like tackling things that are harmful to people. Um, like in my last profile, I actually had people that, you know, left bullying comments. And when I reported them, they said it didn't go against their guidelines, but like me using mm. a, emoji that way went against guidelines again like just doesn't make any sense it's totally not logical at all well i think it, i think it's a drastic show of irresponsibility not not that they can't do it they can do it they've got billions of dollars they just choose not to do it they can put something in place to to do better with it they just choose not to whatever it might be a better ai a team, you know, a team of a thousand people. I mean, I don't know exactly what it would take, but they just don't want to do it. They want the profits. So they're they're just trying to squeak by without actually taking care of it. Like you said, a cucumber emo- emoji or a uh, 14-year-old dancing almost naked doesn't doesn't make sense to me, you know? Yeah, that, it doesn't. The, and again, it's know, like the, absolute the drastic, contact. Yeah. Exactly. Well, what what's in the future for you? What's your plan? Well, I mean, I guess I guess I'm going to try and rebuild, you know, my my profile. Um, but I also think that I'm going to look elsewhere um, because it made me realize that putting all my eggs into one basket for social media is not the right approach. And I think that there's something to be said for creative people to maybe try to do things more old school too. Um, you know, whether it's trying to, I mean, I don't necessarily think this works for me just because I have more video based work, but for any artist that has been, you know, had their account disabled, I think, you know, trying to find maybe like a gallery or, um, enter shows doing it a different way. And I also realized, um, because the thing is, is even though I got to like X number of followers, which wasn't that high, but for me, it was good. It's not like I made money off of it. I didn't. Um, And so I think it's important for anyone, whether creative or non-creative, building out a presence online to decide, well, what is their goal? Is their goal to just, like, get more eyes on their stuff? Or is their goal to somehow make a living out of it or partially a living and then, you know, 
it's not necessarily how many followers you have really matters. It's about having like quality followers and people who are really fans of you, I think. Um, and I think that's another thing that um, is difficult for people is I think so many people go on social media wanting to be famous or wanting to be popular and then realizing like it doesn't necessarily get you anything. Maybe it does. But sometimes it doesn't. Well, I'm sure. Yeah, I'm sure. sometimes it does. I, I dated someone that had like 10,000, 12,000 followers. And she'd get little perks, little free stuff here and there, invitations to shows, uh, grand openings. Somehow, somewhere, someone was curating uh, different um, influencers in the area, and they were able to to invite people like that to plug their place. So some things do come from it for sure. And the the more followers you have, the more stuff like that you get, you know? Yeah, totally. And I, you know, I'm like, my side hobby is I collect sneakers and I know somebody who's like massive in that space and they get free shoes, like any, any shoe it's free. So, you know, um, obviously there are multiple benefits to it, but um, I've also heard stories of like mega influencers who couldn't sell one t-shirt, you know? So I think it just depends. Oh, the, they couldn't sell one t-shirt. Do you know why? Or just <laughs> depends? Um, I don't know. I mean, sometimes a following doesn't translate to um, monetary value hmm. for people. Yeah. I guess that makes sense. But I sense. also it's think that in, like, content, right, different content, like my stuff, it would be a lot harder for me to find somebody who wants to work with me sponsor-wise because, again, like, I do post slightly suggestive stuff, and so there's a lot of companies that don't want that because they want to appeal to, like, the entire gamut of ages. Sure. You just have to find the right uh, person looking for the demographic, though. Because uh, I'm yeah. in marketing, and that's that's always how it works. You find there's always someone willing to buy your product. You have to figure out how to find that someone, though, and who the market is. I have a neighbor that rents his house out. It's a two-bedroom, two-bath. He rents out the whole place for five grand a month. Wow. Which is, yeah, which is crazy. I'm like, what? How do you do that? I Airbnb my house and not not the whole thing, just parts of it. And the idea of I'm just it's just shocking. I could go rent a house here in Utah for I'm not sure I haven't looked for a while, but if I raise it up uh eighteen hundred to twenty five hundred a month. But he'll get That's five. That's such a good a deal. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Especially I know you're in the middle of New York and Manhattan where a closet You don't even want to know what you know, I say. I like Yeah. You know. I I live in probably 395 square feet. At least that's what the person who rented me, my apartment said, and I kind of wanted to punch them in the face when they told me that. Um, but I, um, I pay 2475. Nice for 400 square feet. basically. Yeah. And I've actually stepped on nails in my apartment and had to go get a tetanus shot afterwards. Like it's that bad. Like oh, my mom comes to visit I'm me and sorry. she bangs nails into the floor. Yeah. Um, yeah. but it's, um, it's the New York living. So there's got to yeah, be a price for all this York. amazing stuff. Exactly. I thought a two bedroom, uh, my friend and I were going to share in somewhere in LA and that was four grand and, but it was a decent size, right? For a two bedroom. And we were like, eh, I don't know if we want to spend two grand each for it. Right. But you go to Manhattan, yeah. it's a drastic difference, right? Crazy. It's amazing. Yeah. Exactly. Well, what uh, your so your uh, Instagram is the Twinkie Artist, right? Yeah. Yes. And do you have plans? Act do you ever go ahead? No, go ahead. Do you ever do any prints, any T-shirts of your product, or anything like that? You know, I should because I do have still photos, so I could do prints of those. Um, I've made some posters, like hang up and stuff. Um, but yeah, I have thought, like, I do want to build a website, um, just because also I realize that it's very important to have something 
where people can go to that really like your stuff that isn't just on another platform because obviously you own that website. Um, I mean, it's hosted by somebody else, but you own it technically. And so that can't be disabled, you know, unless you don't pay the monthly fee for the hosting. Yeah, it's, at least it's hard to be disabled. You have to be careful with, like, uh, Google and stuff like that. They'll make you disappear a bit. But there's ways around that. But it's not so drastic like social media for sure. Well, yeah. we'll keep an eye out for your stuff. Thank you for being on the show. Really appreciate it. Thanks and, for having uh, me. I really enjoyed it. Yeah. Yeah, I'm glad we found each other, and I'm glad you got to share a bit about censorship and your experience with it. and our thoughts on it, shared thoughts on it. Uh, you can find yeah. the Twinkie Artist at Instagram, the Twinkie Artist. Oh, I forgot to ask you, why Twinkie yeah. Artist? So, um, interestingly enough, like I always really liked food and um, the whole idea, well, like basically my whole thing is I think it's possible to be seductive without necessarily showing nudity or much of your body. Um And so I thought, like, why not food? Because I do think eating can be a sensual experience. And my first photos I ever took were of me, like, going through the process of eating a Twinkie. And so I was just like, hey, I'll use it as a name. That was it. Oh, cool. That's cool. I don't see any Twinkies on your profile, though. Uh, Well, the first photo I posted, that was after a Twinkie. I did have a Twinkie eating video, but I'm going to probably have to – see if I will post that again because who knows if it goes against the guidelines. I'm not really sure. Um, but I do also yeah, have well a YouTube that... channel. Oh, good. Good. What is that? The YouTube channel. Um, the name is also the Twinkie artist. Okay. Great. The Twinkie artist on YouTube and Instagram. And thank you so much for being on the show. We appreciate it. And I, but thanks for I'm having sure me. That twi- yeah. Thank you. And I, that Twinkie, uh, the cream Twinkie picture that you have, I, I bet you'd be really good on a T-shirt. So think about that. Yeah, that would be cool. Or like a mug. Yeah. A it's mug, on my yeah, sticker. That'd be cool. I can send you some stickers if you want. Yeah, for sure. Uh, Autumn or me will get in touch with you and we'll stay in touch for sure. Okay, sounds good. Thank you so much okay. for having me. Thank you. Thank you guys for listening to the All to Perform show, the show about performing your best in business and life. Keep your eyes and ears out for our next shows, and we're about to do another show with Al. So catch you there. See ya. Bye.